Hey, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do basic keyword research using the Google Keyword Planner so that you can have better success with your SEO for your blog or your website. The biggest challenge with SEO is you often don't know, unless you do this research, what people are searching for. So you might write 100 blog posts which are totally in tune with your topic and your market, which might get great response on social media but you get barely any search traffic. And that's because whatever keywords you're using, you might not even be using any keywords, but whatever your content is, it's not focused on something people are looking for on Google. And using the keyword tool will help you determine what people are looking for, and you can craft your blog posts around that. So the first thing you have to do is go to Google and type in keyword planner. And for me, the first result is Google AdWords Keyword Planner. This tool is part of their AdWords platform. And if you don't know, Google AdWords is their paid advertising wing. That's, that's where Google makes pretty much all of its money is from its paid advertising. To use the keyword tool, you do not need a paid account. You do not need to enter a credit card. You just need to have a Google account and you need to have Google AdWords activated. And if you come to this page and you don't have a Google account, when you click to sign in, it'll walk you through setting up your account and you can just choose add credit card later and then you just don't add the credit card. And I'm currently in the wrong account, so I'm gonna switch accounts to the correct one. Once you get into your Google AdWords, you will either be taken right to the Keyword Planner tool or you're gonna to have to go to tools at the, up at the top and click on Keyword Planner. And this is the first screen in the Keyword Planner. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on this first, op first option, search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. I usually use a phrase and I type in something I wanna research. Maybe I wanna research WordPress page speed, how to make your website faster. So you type in a phrase there, you click on get ideas at the bottom. The first screen you'll see after that is the ad group ideas, which is specifically related to creating ads using AdWords. I usually skip that and I click on keyword ideas, the next tab over, and then it will give me data on the keyword I just entered. So WordPress page speed, Google is saying averages about 20 searches a month. That's not very many. And this is the trend over time. If you type, hover over this little trend icon here, this shows the last 12 months how that keyword is trending because some keywords are seasonal. So Google likes to show this information. And the, the competition that you see here is not the competition for organic results. This is the competition for paid results, paid ads. So this competition indicator is not 100% relevant to SEO, but usually, if a keyword is competitive for paid results, then it's also competitive for organic rankings. So if we dig into this a little deeper, this first um, box up here shows the exact keyword I entered, and it shows information about that. And then below that, it has another box with a list of related keywords, Google, uh, keywords that Google thought were related. And web page speed test gets 1,000 searches a month, which is a lot more. That might be a keyword I wanna use for a specific blog post. And there's also more keywords. Page speed test, page load speed, website page speed, page load speed test, and on and on. And what you wanna do is you wanna pick the one that gets the highest traffic. So for this one, um, page speed test gets great traffic. Website speed test gets a lot more traffic, but the more traffic a keyword has generally the more competition there will be for it in organic rankings. But what you wanna do is you wanna pick a primary keyword, whatever that keyword may be, and then you wanna get the related keywords. So if you have web page speed test, let's say that's our primary, that's our main keyword that we optimize the post for. But in addition, when we're writing that post or when we're editing it, if someone else wrote it and we're editing it, we wanna make sure that these other related keywords also appear in that text once or twice. And those are called LSI keywords or latent semantic indexing keywords. And Google uses the LSI keywords to determine whether or not you know what you're talking about. And the reason that makes sense is this. Each industry has its own jargon. So if you're a fly fisherman, 
you have a tackle box, you have flies, you have fishing rods, you have lures, you're talking about fish, and you have certain phrases and descriptions that only people who are fishermen would know. Uh, I'm not a fisherman, so this was a bad example, but I'm sure there's a phrase for when there's a lot of bugs hovering just over the water and all the fish are snapping at it. That could be called something like Sailor Sunday, or who knows, they might have a phrase for that. And when you include these phrases in your content, it tells Google that you are actually part of that industry. You know what you're talking about. You've done it before. And the way they, they're very clever, the way they determine what that jargon is, is from books and magazines. Books and magazines are usually written by subject matter experts. And Google is making all the books in the world digital. And so when they scan through all those books written by subject matter experts, they see all the keywords and phrases that those experts talk about. And what they wanna see is that you are also using those keywords and phrases for that market, and that tells them that you know what you're talking about. And this goes back to the early days of SEO when people used to just spam the search engines and they would just keyword stuff their content. They would just use web page speed test as the keyword and they'd have that 20 times in the content and that would be it. You'd rank and everything would be fantastic. But you don't necessarily know anything about the topic. So to combat that, Google decided to use LSI keywords and said, if someone's running a page speed test, they need to be writing about these related keywords because every other subject matter expert writes about these related keywords. So that's why I wanna collect all those. And that diatribe took a little longer than I expected, but that's how you wanna do your keyword research. You wanna search for your keyword you find one, you're, the one that you enter, like when I enter WordPress page speed, only got 20, that's not super. Google recommended a better one. So we, we take the, the best one we think that would fit best for a market, something we're knowledgeable about, and we can create the post for that or, or outsource the creation of that post. And then we find the LSI keywords to include in that article or that content as well. A question that I receive often is what number of searches is the right number? What number should I be looking for? And if you're writing a lot of content and you're in a market with a lot of keywords, then as long as a number shows up here, if, there, if there's no monthly searches, there's usually a dash like you see beside or underneath suggested bid. If any number shows up here, that's worth writing an article for. Now, obviously the higher the number, the better, and if you're only writing content once a week, you should just focus on the higher, higher traffic keywords. But if you do like what I do and write an article a day, then you wanna focus on any keyword that gets any amount of traffic because that allows you to really dominate your market. Because if you're writing an article a day or more than one article a day, you can just, you can be in the top 10 for the entire market for any keyword research, any keyword someone types in. And it's gonna be easier for you to rank for the lower, the lower traffic keywords first in general, because those are usually long tail keywords, meaning there's more than one keyword in the phrase. So WordPress page speed is three keywords. Web page speed test is four. And the longer that phrase is, the more long tail it is. And as long as you're getting search volume, write, uh, write content for it. Because once you have that online and it's out there, that's gonna be there more or less forever, or at least for years. And it's gonna keep bringing in traffic. People are gonna keep coming targeted traffic, keep on that post. In that post, hopefully you have some calls to action for, to get people to do what you want them to do to, to provide them with more value. And so that's basically my answer every time. As long as there's search volume, it's worth writing for or worth writing content for. But if you don't write a lot of content, say you, you only have time to write one article a month, then you wanna focus on the more higher search volume keywords. But you have to be careful because the higher the search volume, the more competition it will have. And then the more competition it has, the harder it's gonna be for you to rank it. So if you can find a long tail keyword, like web page speed test with a thousand monthly searchers, it's a long tail, it's got a lot of searches, ad competition is low, so SEO competition may be low, that's a good keyword to target for an article. If you wanna search a different keyword, um, maybe WordPress, CSS or something, whatever it is you wanna research, you just type it in up here 
and then I'll update all the information down below and you can get more interesting keyword information for writing your posts or your article. This is basic keyword research. I could talk for two hours and show you stuff for two hours on how to do spectacular keyword research, which I may do in the future, but this will at least get you started. This will get your SEO at, at least to a point where you're writing things, writing content for keywords that you know for a fact are getting traffic. And I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video, share it on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get more awesome videos like this every day. And check out WPLearningLab.com where we write about WordPress every single day. Talk to you soon.